This is the Dungeon Master's Handbook. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Dungeon Master's Handbook. I'm Michael Shorten, Chicago is, and welcome. In this episode, I have something very special that I'm going to share with you direct from my tabletop AD&D campaign. I have a system where if players write a journal entry or some sort of information that helps pass on the lore to other players then they get 100 XP. It's something that I've done from the very beginning as a way of encouraging players to write. And it comes and goes over the years. For a stretch, I'll get one or two players that write a lot of entries, and then they'll stop for whatever reason. Usually it's, you know, time or life or whatever. And then someone else will pick it up. And it's been kind of light for about a year now. But just the other day good player by the name of David, dropped a journal entry on me that just says so much in so few words about what's going on lately in uh, my tabletop campaign. We just had a wonderful game, a makeup game last Sunday, and I want to share this with you. It's a bit of an experiment, doing a little bit of spoken word acting here. Let's listen. Edwig's Journal, 30th day of autumn. <sighs> what was once a black and white conflict is now introducing shades of gray. It is difficult to determine what is good. There are dark ones and demons at war with each other. Deities of the old world combating a reign of light and the realms of mortals caught up in the middle of it all. Remain underneath Tullock, searching for a magical sword. Our provisions continue to dwindle. A winged fiend bade us to destroy a gem, but the gem revealed itself to be sentient and wanting us to aid it. Like unreliable mercenaries, we changed allegiance and decided not to shatter the gem. Now we flee the wrath of the winged fiend through endless tunnels in this forsaken underworld. <sighs> Indescribable horrors assail us. Creatures casting spells that put us to sleep. Winged and scaled creatures marching as soldiers with spear and shield. Steel fails us, and only blessings and spells keep the enemy at bay. During a melee, I was laid low. And awoke later from divine provision. The path beneath us is caved in. The gem still guides us further and deeper into the underworld. And we obey. Well, what did you think, loyal henchfolk? Did you like that? I know I did. I think uh, David wrote a fantastic journal, and I'm really happy I got a chance to share it with you. Yes, indeed, the PCs have explored the Demon Fortress in my uh, tabletop campaign. They have figured out that by destroying the Gem of Zuccoth with the Hammer of Rundes, they would indeed free demons who were currently held only by the will of the soul that was trapped inside that gem, the soul of the demon lord's most strongest lieutenant who the demon lord bound to this place, just in case the demon lord wanted to return later. The players managed to outrun and outwit the guardian, and it was very angry, and it sent 
demon hordes after the players, and they managed to fight it off, and I truly thought that there were going to be some deaths, but the players, being the intelligent, smart, and somewhat lucky players that they are, managed to make all the right decisions at all the right times, and their reward was they made it out alive. But yes, they are going deeper in search of a magical sword that may somehow, some way, enable them to rid the world of the Dark Ones. We'll see how it goes. All right, that's it for this episode. Hope you enjoyed it. No, it's a short one, but I very much enjoyed doing this. Until next time, game on.